faultless in sight, he was favored with intelligence, originality of thought, and accurate choice of the means leading to accurate goals. His long silence helped favorable in, favorably in his habit of de meditation and deep investigation into the truth. His vivid mind and pure nature was, were helpfully instrumental in assimilating and comprehending ways of life and people. Individual and community-wise, we shunned superstitious practices, but took an active part in constructive and useful dealings. Otherwise, he would have recourse to his self-concentrated solitude. He kept himself aloof from drinking wine, eating meat slaughtered on stone altars, or attending idolatrous festivals. He held the idols in, ext in extreme aversion, and most abhorrence, he could never tolerate someone swearing by Allah and al -Uzza. Allah's providence, no doubt, detached him from all abominable or evil practices. Even when he tried to obey his instinct to enjoy some life pleasures or follow some irrespectable traditions, Allah's providence intervened to curb any lapse in the course, reported Muhammad as saying, I have never tried to do what my people do except for two times. Every time Allah intervened, I checked me from doing so, and I never did that again. Once I told my fellow shepherd to take care of my sheep, when we were in the upper part of Mecca, I wanted to go down to Mecca and entertain myself as the young men did. I went down to the first house of Mecca where I heard music. I entered and, and asked, what is this? Someone answered, it is a wedding party. I sat down and listened, but soon went into deep sleep. I was awakened by the heat of the sun. I went back to my fellow shepherd and told him of what had happened to me. I have never tried it again. Reported of the authority of Jabir bin Abdullah that he said, While the people were rebuilding al Kaaba, the Prophet Muhammad went with Abbas to carry some Stones, Abba said, put your loincloth round your neck to protect you from the stones, as he did that. The prophet fell to the ground and his eyes turned skyward. Later on, he woke up and shouted, my loincloth, my loincloth. He wrapped himself in his loincloth. In another report, his loins were never seen afterwards. The authorities agree in ascribing to the youth of Muhammad modesty and deportment, virtuous behavior and virtuous behavior and graceful manners. He proved himself to be the ideal of manhood and to possess a spotless character, he was the most obliging to his comp compatriots, the most honest in his talk, and the mildest in temper. He was the most gentle-hearted, child, hospitable, and always impressed people. By his piety, inspiring co countenance, he was the most truthful and the best to keep covenant to his fellow citizens. By common consent, gave him the title of Allah being trustworthy, the mother of believers, Khadija, once said, He unites uterine relations. He helps the poor and the needy. He entertains the guest and endures hardships in the path of truthfulness. 
the shade of the message of Prophet Hur. In the cave of Hera, when Prophet Muhammad was nearly 40, he had been, wa been wont to pass long hours in retirement, meditating and speculating all over all aspects of creation around him. This meditative temperament helped to widen the mental gap between him and his compatriots. He used to provide himself with sarwick barley, porridge and water and then directly head for the hills and ravines in the neighborhood of Mecca. One of these in particular was his favorite resort, a cave named Hira in the Mount Adnur. It was only two miles from Mecca, a small cave four yards long and 1.75 yards wide. He would always go there and invite wayfarers to share him, his modesty provision. He used to devote most of his time, and Ramadan in particular, to worship and meditation, to worship and meditation, and of the universe around him. His heart was restless about the moral evils and idolatry that were rampant among his people. He was as yet helpless because no definite course or specific approach had been available for him to follow and rectify the ill practices around him. This solitude attended with this sort of contemplative approach must be understood in its divine perspective. It was a preliminary stage to the period of grave responsibilities that he, that he was to shoulder very soon. Privacy and detachment from the impurities of life were two in indispensable prerequisites for the prophet soul to come into close communion with the unseen power that lies behind all aspects of his ex existence in this infinite universe. It was a rich period of privacy which lasted for three years and ushered in a new era of indissoluble contact with that power. Gabriel brings down the revelation when he was 40, the age of complete perfection, of which prophets were always ordered to disclose their message. Signs of prophethood started to appear and twinkle on the horizon, on the horizon, horizons of life. They were the true visions he used to experience for six months. The period of prophethood was 23 years, so the period of these six months of true visions constituted an integral part of the 46 parts of prophethood. In Ramadan, in, this, in his third year of solitude, solitude in the cave of Hira, Allah's will desired his mercy to flow on earth, and Muhammad was honored with the prophethood and the light of revelation burst upon him with some verses of the noble Quran as for the exact date careful investigation in, into circumstantial evidence and relevant clues point directly to Monday 21st Ramadan at night August 10, 6, 10 AD With Prophet Muhammad exactly 40 years, 6 months and 12 days of age, 3 months and 22 days, 39 Gregorian days, uh, years, 3 months and 22 days. I show the voracious gave the following duration of that most significant event and that uh, thought brought the divine light which would dispel the darkness of disbelief and ignorance. It led life down a new course and brought about the most serious amendment to the line of the history of mankind. Forerunners of the revelation assumed the form of true visions, 
that would strikingly come true all the time. After that, solitude became dear to him, and he would go to the cave here to engage in Tahadnoth. Devotion, therefore, a certain number of nights before returning to his family, and then he would return for provisions for a similar stay at length unexpectedly. The truth, the angel came to him and said, Recite, I cannot recite. He, Mahatman, said, The prophet described that he took me and squeezed me vehemently, and then let me go and repeated the order, Recite. I cannot recite, said I, and once again he squeezed me and let, and let me till I was exhausted. Then he said, Recite, I said, I cannot recite, he squeezed me for a third time, and then let me go and said, Read in the name of your Lord, who has created all that exists, has created man from a clot of peace of thick, coagulated, Lord, read your, and your Lord is the most gracious, generous. The prophet repeated these verses. He was trembling with the fear. At this stage, he came back to his wife, Khadija, and said, cover. This is some contrast between scholars about the fifth day on which the revelation started. But I have written here what seems to be the correct one for details. They cover me. They covered him until he restored security. He apprised the DJ of the incident of the cave and added that he was horrified. His wife tried to soothe him and reassured him, saying, Allah will never disgrace you. You unite, you to read relations. You bear the burden of the weak, you help the poor and the needy, and you entertain the guest and endure hardships in the path of truthfulness. She set out the Prophet to her cousin, Waraka, who had embraced Christianity in the pre-Islamic period and used to write the Bible in Hebrew. He was a blind old man, Khadija said. My cousin listened to your nephew, Waraka said. Oh, my nephew, what did you see? The messenger of Allah told him what had happened to him. This is Namas, the angel who is entrusted with divine secrets that Allah sent to Moses. I wish I were a younger, I wish I could live up to the time where, when your people would turn you out. Muhammad asked, will they drive me out? Waraka answered in the affirmative and said, anyone who came with something similar to what you have brought was treated with hostility. And if I should be alive till that day, then I would support you strongly. A few days later, Waraka died, and the revelation also subsided, reported that the messenger of Allah left the cave of Hira after being surprised by the revelation, but later on returned to the cave and continued his solitude. Afterwards, he came back to Mecca, reported on this incident, saying, after mentioning the coming of the revelation, the messenger of Allah said, I have never abhorred anyone more than a, a, than a poet or a madman. I cannot stand looking at either of them. I will never tell anyone of tell anyone of Quraysh of my revelation. I will climb a mountain and throw myself down and die. That will relieve me. I went to do that, but halfway up the mountain I heard a voice from the sky saying, O oh, Muhammad, you are the messenger of Allah, and I am Gabriel. I looked upwards and saw Gabriel in the form of a man putting his legs on the horizon. He said, O oh, Muhammad, you are the messenger of Allah, and I am Gabriel. I stopped and looked at him. He, his sight distracted my attention from what I had intended to do. I stood in my place, transfixed, I tried to shift my eyes away from him. 